Hey guys, and welcome back to Sports Design School, where we teach you everything you need to know to create high quality sports designs in Adobe Photoshop. Now we have a lot of exciting stuff to show you today and to talk about today. But before we get started, make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel. We're actually going to be giving away the PSD we use for this design completely free to anyone that watches this video. So make sure you give us a like if that's something you appreciate. But today we're going to be walking through this Michael Jordan design right here. And I'm going to be breaking down each layer that I've done, um, kind of walking through my thought process, the why behind the design. So let's get started. So like I said, we're essentially just going to be walking through this design. I'm going to go layer by layer and talk about what each layer does and then the why behind each layer to help you guys get a better understanding of how you can recreate a look similar to this on your own in Adobe Photoshop. And then again, like I said, I'm going to be giving away this PSD completely for free. Look down at the link in the description to download that if you want to follow along as we go along with this video. But That'll be completely available to you so you'll be able to go in and edit this in whatever way you want to. So to start off, I'm just going to go through and turn off all of my adjustment layers and things like that. And this is a pretty simple design as I think you'll see. And that's, that's about, that's, that's about good. Okay. So I started off with these images I pulled off of Google. I'm, I'm pretty sure. So I have this big Michael Jordan image in the background. I'll see if I can find it. If I can find it again, I'll put it down in the description um, linked so you can have access to it. If not, I'll just put the PSD, um, like I said, so you'll be able to go through and edit this in whatever way you want to. So I have this big image, which is just the back of Michael Jordan. I have this image down here. You can't really see, but it's just, oh, it's just Michael Jordan covering Kobe Bryant. Nothing super exciting there. Um, that just kind of tucked down in the corner. And then I have this overlay right here with this Michael Jordan dunking image. And again, I just pulled these off of Google. I don't own the rights to these images, but if I can find them, I'll put the link down in the description so you guys can use these images. So what I have here is I have these two images are just placed into the background. Nothing super fancy going on here, just image place. And then this image is placed here. What I did with this image is I use this image mask um, right here. So essentially what I did is I created this shape, this kind of grunge looking thing, and then I put my image on top of that using a clipping mask. And the clipping mask restricts my image to the boundaries of the whatever is underneath it. So you can see kind of how on the fringe on the edge of my kind of square right here, you can see through my image. And that's where you can see through the original kind of clipping mask layer. So that's kind of all I did for that. Now, if you want to find cool grunge textures and things like that, just Google for it. Um, that's the best way to find things like that. Just type in grunge clipping mask or something along those lines, and you'll get a decent amount of search results that'll pop up like that. Um, so perfect. So that's what I have for the background so far. And then I have my main cutout for this image, which is just, again, another image I found off of Google. It's just Michael Jordan um, putting up a layup. Nothing super complicated about that. And it, this right here alone, this design looks pretty cool just because of the layout of the image. But then I added some effects on top that I'll get into in a second. But um, nothing super complicated about this layer. I just did a cutout. I'll be, I keep on saying this in every video, but I seriously, I'm planning on recording it today. We'll be putting out a video on all of the different ways to cut out different players in Photoshop so that you'll have the complete tutorial of everything you need to know um, to create cutouts like this. But for now, that's all you need to know. So then I started off by adding a levels effect. And this isn't anything super drastic, but it's just a little bit of a a little bit of a lighter um, effect to my, the black parts of my image. So you can see here what I did is I just dragged this a little bit to the left, 
to lighten it up a little bit. So those are my settings if you want to go through and copy that. Again, you could probably just get rid of this layer altogether. It's not a super pronounced effect, but I mean, it, it does a nice job. From there, I added a gradient map. And so what the gradient map does is it starts getting my images, all the different images, it starts to help them blend together a little bit better. So what I did for this gradient map is I went through and chose this particular gradient, which is one of the standard gradients that you can find in Adobe Photoshop. And so you might be thinking, these colors are so weird, what are you talking about? So if I turn my gradient all the way up to, say, 100, this is what my image looks like. But when you adjust the fill on that gradient map and you turn it down to 40, it gives it a cool little kind of toned effect and it makes everything kind of blend together, which is what I was looking for for this design. The other thing I like about this gradient map is it gives it a little bit of that old school printed look when you turn it down like that. Like you can see in some of these highlights right here, it kind of looks more like an illustration um, versus an actual image. Same thing with like this over here. It just makes it look like it's like the cool illustrated comic book effect a little bit, which I really liked a lot. Um, so that's why I did that gradient map right there. From there, I just added the Jordan logo to the top right. Super easy, you just Google it, drag it into the design, and then I added a co color overlay because the original was black, but I, I just made the logo white to show up a little bit better. From there, I added a halftone overlay, and I set the fill to 40. Now, I'll show you what a halftone overlay is by turning it all the way up. So see all these little dots right here? that give like a little bit of a grainy texture. Again, I wanted to reinforce the kind of comic book feel of this design. So I just brought this in. Now, if you're looking for a halftone overlay similar, similar to this, just go into Google and type in halftone overlay. There's tons of options out there. Or go to one of the websites I've talked about before, um, pexels or unsplash.com and just type in halftone overlay and they have tons of free royalty free resources that you can use which is super awesome but so i have those kind of halftones throughout all of my image and then i originally turned it down to 40 i think is what i had it on i might turn it up to maybe say 60 because i kind of like the way that looks yeah that's that's pretty cool so you can see it's not like a huge effect to my image but it gives a nice kind of cool textured look And then I added noise. So noise is essentially just kind of adding grain to my image. You can't see it all that much, but it's just a really subtle effect, kind of in some of the details. And so I did this by, there's a couple of different ways you can add noise and grain to an image, but what I find the easiest way to do it is just to create a new layer and then fill that layer with white. So I'm going to hit my paint bucket tool and hit white. And I'm going to go up to filter, noise, add noise. And I'm going to add however much noise I want. So you can start to see some of that graininess in our white background that we just created. Whenever I get to where I want it to be, I'm going to hit OK. Now you're thinking, well, that doesn't look very good. But we can use a blending mode to remove the white parts of this image and keep the noisy parts of our image, which we're going for. And you can do that by just selecting your layer and choosing multiply. And you can see the noisy parts of your image remain. I actually like that version better than the version I did. I might turn it down to 70. And I'm going to delete this. And I'm just going to title this layer noise. Perfect. Now from here, I went in and added a hue saturation filter to really bring out some of those reds in my image. Again, I talked about how I wanted this to be nice and kind of comic booky and vibrant, um, kind of look like it's printed a little bit. And so I went through on my hue saturation slider and just turned the saturation up 24 to give it a really vibrant, colorful look and feel. 
From there, I tweaked the curves a little bit to make my image a little bit darker. If you've never played around with curves before, it's a great way of controlling the light in your image to give it a nice, cool um, color profile to your image. So I'll show you what I did. So here's your curves adjustment tool. If you don't know how to get this, just go to adjustments and then hit curves and it'll add a curves layer to your design. But essentially, I've talked about this before, but the bottom left is the dark parts of your image and the top right is the light parts of your image. And then the middle are your midtones. And so when you drag this down, the midtones get darker. If we drag this all the way down, the white parts, like look at his jersey when I do this, they start to become more gray. And so I just dragged some of the midtones down a little bit. Um, I just wanted a subtle kind of dark effect to this image to give it a little bit more contrast. And then the last thing I did for this particular image is added another levels effect. And this is to really make that printed cartoon effect magnified. Um, so I'll double click on that. So what I did is I brought the right part of this levels all the way down. So what that does is it makes some of the dark muted parts of my image more vibrant and makes them a little bit lighter. And then I also brought this mid-tone mid -tone point down as well. So it brings more light into the image and really that's where I'll turn this on and off so you can see the difference. So look at all the white parts of the image and how blown out they are in terms of like how bright this particular point is. And you can see it goes from not that bright to incredibly bright because we increase the levels just a bit. And there we have it. That's how I recreated this entire design from scratch in Adobe Photoshop. Now, if you have any questions or thoughts, just let me know um, down in the comments below. But I'll be including this PSD completely for free in the description so make sure you download that and check it out you can go through all of these layers all make sure i include the latest version that i did in this video with all of the updates so you'll be able to follow along um but other than that guys let me know if you enjoyed it make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel and leave a comment down below if you have anything you want to see from us here very soon have a great one